Hey everyone. Now, I wanted to make this video to follow up the last one I did about IPv6. Uh, firstly, I want to thank all of those of you who told me about the, um, the routing table size on the WAN would be too prohibitive to do what I was suggesting. Now, I never claimed to be a WAN expert, so I didn't know that, but I do now. So, so thanks for that info. But I wanted to make this video because I also saw in the comments there were some misconceptions about the IP addressing of IPv6, that it's too hard to remember, and also some of you like NAT because you think it's a security thing. It's not, but if you like NAT, I'm still going to show you how it works in IPv6 just the same. So I'll rip into it on the computer and go through some stuff with you. All right, so let's start with IPv4. What you've got is, let's say, a router somewhere on your network. Right, that's sitting there. On this side you've got your WAN and you've got your WAN IP address right there. Now on the inside you've probably got some machines that have an address like say 192.168. Dot, I don't know, something you got something. Okay, now how did they get those addresses? Well, they got them from a DHCP server. So I'll just draw the uh, DHCP server which is usually part of the router. So that is what gave these hosts their address. And what happens is, let's say your WAN address is, I don't know, something, it won't be this, but 1234, right? So when they try to get out to the internet, they go up through the router, and then they get some network address translation, and instead of the source being 192.168 something, it gets changed to be 1234. So it continues out to the web to go to, I don't know, some server out there, right? And the source address is by that server is seen as 1234. So it comes back into the router, gets unmatted and then goes back to the initial host. So the server out in the WAN doesn't really see this 192.168 because that's not routable out in the net anyway. So that's how pretty much everyone's used to at home. So the core thing to remember here is that the IP address that's down here that you use, this 192.168, came from a DHCP server. Now we'll look at similar setup with IPv6. So same sort of thing, got a router. No worries, you've got some sort of WAN IP address again, which will be really long and obscure, I'm sure, from the ISP. Then you've got the addresses down here. Now, there's a couple of addresses. There's ones that start with FE80, and they're the link local ones. They're created automatically on your network interface, and they're based on your MAC address, um, and they're just automatic. And they're not the ones you'll use for any connections to the WAN, because they're only uh, link local. They're only good for the, um, the local link. The link local. All right, so they won't be used as a source address for comms out to the WAN. You need another address. Now your other address can come from router advertisements. You get a router advertisement going to the host that say, yeah, I'm a router, and it gives it the prefix so that it can make its own address. But that might be long and obscure, which is what a lot of people in the comments were talking about. But I don't care for that. Because if you look, this so-called nice easy address over here came from a DHCP server. It didn't create it itself, um, but there's nothing to stop us having a DHCP server over here. So DHCP v6. And that will have a scope and a range to set up an IP address on your hosts. So this address over here, this 192.168 stuff, that's for your, your home users, right? It's not going to be routed out there on the net. Well, the same thing exists in IPv6, and it starts with FD. So FD00, blah, 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 blah. And the idea is you have FD at the start and then the next 48 bits are random. And that gives you 64 bits that's supposed to be unique. It's pretty unique. Um, it's for your home network anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so as long as you remember, it starts with FD00. So what you can do is just set up your DHCP server for version 6 and just start them with F FD. So that's the way you can set up IP addresses that are easy to remember. So I'll just quickly show you mine. Okay, here's this computer here. If I do IP-4 address show uh, dev if zero, here's my IPv4 address. So you can see I've got 192.168.10.3. Beautiful. That's one of those things you might say you can remember. Now here's my IPv6 address. FD 10 with a 3. That's it. That's my IP address. And um, this is that link local that I was talking to you about. You don't even have to worry about that much. That's just for back-end stuff that sort of runs in the background. But this is your global one. So this is the one you'll actually use. So there's my global address. Now back over here, that still has to get out there if I want to reach some kind of server, right? So what happens is that address goes up to the router 
And if I didn't do anything else, the router would just send it out to the server, but would have a problem because the server would see the source address as FD00. But over here, remember how this did NAT? Well, IPv6 can do the same thing. No one said it can't. So what you can do is just have that as your home addressing scheme from your DHCP server, exactly like IPv4, NAT it on your way out, and then the server will see this address coming from uh, whatever your WAN address is. Right, so that can be done in exactly the same way as IPv4. And I'll just show you a bit about how that can be done. Right, so on my router, I use NF tables for all of this. And you'll see on the post routing hook, I've got this little rule here that says masquerade. Now I'll just bring up the old diagram that everyone should know. So this is the way packets go through your system. So you've got all these green hooks here of different places to do things. So you've got, the only one I'm concerned about is the pre-routing and the post-routing hook. In this case, we're looking at the post-routing hook. So this is just before it leaves the device and heads out. It's if you want to do anything, um, like, like it says here, source natting, okay? So what I've got is I've got that NAT set up on that post routing hook. And if the output interface is my WAN interface, that's what it is, then I just tell it to masquerade, which is the NAT thing with the um, translation of the source address. And, and that's it. And if I bring this up again, you'll see over here you've got different types. You've got an INET table, an IP table, or IPv6. Now IP just means IPv4. IPv6 means only IPv6, but if it's an INET rule, then it applies to both of them. And that's what I've got. I've got this set up as an INET table. So anything, be it IPv4 or IPv6, if it's going out of the WAN port, masquerade it. Okay, so with that rule, what I've got here, I'll just ping 6 Google in a second. Over here, I've got a packet capture running on the WAN side of my router, just looking for IP, ICMP version 6. So when I ping that, You'll see, doo -doo -doo, okay, I'll just stop that. The source address of this ping wasn't my, my address here, so IP6 address. Um, it wasn't the FD10 uh, with three on the end. It was this long one here. Now that's my WAN address. So similar to IPv4, when it leaves my router out into the internet, the source address is the WAN interface on the router, and then it goes off to Google, and Google replies, and then it you know unnats it and sends it back to to here so I can get the replies. So that's one way of doing it, and that's basically the equivalent of how most people are used to in IPv4. Now, that means my FD0 addresses aren't directly routable from the internet, same as the 192.168 ones aren't. But we can work on that too, that's the second part. I just wanted to straighten up that first bit and say that you can make addresses that are easy to remember from your own DHCP server, which is how they were made in IPv4, and natting on the outbound interface. All of that can be done the same. So that's that. All right, so coming back here, that was one way of doing it using NAT, same as IPv4. So what I can also do is use my prefix. Now the ISP gives me a slash 48, okay? So this here, this address that I, that I make, I can call that, well, I already did. If let's say the host is FD10, then all zeros, three, right? And I'll call that a 64 bit um, address. Okay, so FD10 and whoppy wop. So what I, could, what I could do is make it so when this goes to go out to the internet, instead of doing a simple masquerading NAT like I had before, I can still do NAT, but just have it like a one to one NAT, okay? Which is called NAT prefix translation version six. Okay, so what I want to do is translate my prefix, which in this case is F FD10 and a whole bunch of zeros up to 64 bits. I want to translate that to my 48, which came from the ISP, which is like 2403, blah, 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 right? So when that goes out, that'll then have this as its source address, right? 2403 and so on, so on, so on. And the dif difference between this and the other NAT is that this is one-to-one. -one. So if there's another host on my network with, let's say, FD10, um, all zeros four, or well five actually, because I can I know which one that is, because I've remembered them. So five, it will then go out there to the router, get translated to an address using my external prefix, and then it will head on its way as well to some sort of server or something. Okay, and that's that's easy as well. So that by doing this, I now have them accessible. When I say accessible, I mean routable. There's still a firewall here. Um, they can be routed to directly from somewhere out in the WAN. So if there's a host out here, it can it can say, okay, I want to go to two four zero three something 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 
five and it'll come in here get translated and head off to the right host so I'll show you that now right so on my router firewall here just before that rule I'll put another rule and let's just put that there so we can see it and I'm saying the same sort of thing so when the output interface is the WAN one um, if it's IPv6 with a source address of something from my LAN that's my uh, that's my LAN subnet here then I'm going to source net it with the prefix of what my external one is now that's the one that was given to me by the ISP with a 10 added to it for this demo okay and coming in if I go to the top of this on the pre-routing hook so again if you go back here now I'm doing this on the pre-routing hook which is where you do destination that stuff here I'm saying okay something comes in from the WAN I meant to say D address not S address that was just a copy and paste error then I'm going to destination that that to the prefix of my internal one so I'll do that so I still got the same address FD FD 10 3 easy to remember ping 6 google.com now what happens I can still ping Google of course but if you look at the packet capture over here my source address is now 2403 blah 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 blah, blah 10 3 not quite the same as this but it's the prefix one that was given to me by the ISP that goes to Google Google comes back and goes to that now there's a couple of differences firstly obviously this address now maps to a particular host like if I go to um, a different host like SSH uh, FD 10 below 5 easy to remember and that's a Raspberry Pi so I'll just do Pi okay <laughs> that's a retro Pi if I uh, ping 6 google.com from there you'll see what happens you can see the individual computer yes so you can see that came from a different IP address to this one even though they're both from my house so that's something that some people said um, they like the NAT of in IPv4 but as I showed before you can still do the same sort of NAT that you do in IPv4 if you really want exactly the same so it's up to you the um, the benefit of this is if you want to run a web server or some sort of server you want people to be able to access you can do it this way and just have the NAT one-to-one -one and give them your public address now the benefit of this is if my um, uh, prefix changes if the ISP changes or I change ISP or something I just have to change those two rules for the NAT in my um, NF tables and everything will go on and of course the DNS to go with it and that'll get the job done now I've said a million times and I've made a video on it that NAT is not a firewall you've got to get that out of your heads now I've got a snippet of one of the rules from my um, firewall there's a whole bunch of rules so I just um, pluck this out to show you the one in question here and you can see input interface if 2 drop now that's taken at the both the forwarding hook and the input hook because it could be for the local router or it could be something that's routing through so either way what I'm doing now is a filter which means I'm you know, firewalling stuff and all it says is if it came in from the WAN interface drop it now there is one just before that to say allow established connections to return obviously we need them but basically if someone tries something from the internet to me it's going to get dropped it doesn't say here IPv4 or IPv6 because it covers them both. I didn't have to make any new any new firewall rule um, to drop unknown source traffic to IPv6. Um, it's I got it covered just the same way for the um, masquerading that I did before outbound. There's just one rule that covers both protocol families, so that's really not a problem on the firewall. Just because there's a route to it, like you could route to this, but you're going to get dropped. It's still a firewall that's going to drop it okay so they're the ways you can do it you can either masquerade it just like you do with IPv4 or you can do one-to-one -one that um, in IPv6 if you want um, publicly routable addresses all the way here but if you're only ever going to be a client in IPv6 nothing to stop you doing that like you did in IPv4 simple as that so what about all those big long funky addresses that that you've seen before and you think you're never going to remember them it's just um, you know random 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 well they come from not a DHCP server you've got your router and then you've got your stateless auto config slack I call them Dutch addresses because there's a double A so your Dutch address anyway you got your router and when it sends out its uh, router adverts there's a flag in there that says make your address or not make your address and if it is it'll pass the prefix down and say listen here's the prefix make your own address out of it and that address will be a fully routable public IP address so similar to what I showed with my one-to-one -one netting this address will go to the router it'll route it to the um, external network 
and it'll go to some server out there and your server will see that as the source address and it'll just pass it straight back through so it's ready to go straight out of there without any NAT it'll just it'll just head out there because um, your ISP will route it to you okay but um, that doesn't mean it's open to the world you still want to have a firewall in here okay so you still got a firewall if something started out here it shouldn't shouldn't get in but if you start a connection inside you have an address that's automatic to get out there and they'll they'll be the ones that are tricky to remember but as I said that's without a DHCP server if you had IPv4 without a DHCP server you wouldn't even have that so if you want fancy looking addresses that that, that you can remember just run a DHCP v6 server and you're done okay so I just wanted to address that in this video and hopefully clear up a few things for those who are still scared of it um, there'll be some more videos on IPv6 stuff, I'm sure, and um, I appreciate all the comments too. There was a lot of uh, feedback from that last video, and a lot of new people joined up too, so welcome to the channel for you lot. Um, I think I'll leave it there for now, so until next time, take it easy.